Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss sigma and tanh activation functions with a simple numerical example. In the previous videos, I have discussed what are activation functions and why do we need activation functions. Also, I have discussed activation functions like softmax and variations of ReLU like ReLU, leaky ReLU and parametric ReLU activation functions. Link for those videos is given in the description below. First, we will discuss a sigmoid or logistic activation function. This function takes any real value. For example, the weighted sum may be any real value that will be given as an input to this sigmoid function. The output of sigmoid function ranges between 0 to 1 here. That is the minimum value of the sigmoid activation function is 0 and the maximum will be equal to 1 in this particular case. Mathematically, sigmoid or logistic function can be shown something like this f of x is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus x where x is the weighted sum. When you pass weighted sum to this particular function, you will get the output in the range of 0 to 1 over here. If the input is uh, higher side, then the output will be 1 here. That is, you can notice here the input is 6, the output will be equal to 1 in this particular case. If the output is towards on the lower side, that is a minus value, the output will be towards 0 in this particular case. Sigmoid or the logistic activation function is one of the most widely used activation function because uh, it is commonly used for models where uh, we want to predict the output uh, in terms of uh, probabilities. For example, the values in the range of 0 to 1 like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or something like that, uh, we can use this particular sigmoid or logistic activation function. And uh, the output of uh, sigmoid activation function will be in the range of 0 to 1 and the probability is also will be in the range of 0 to 1. So it is more suitable for these kind of problems over here. The function that is uh, the sigma function is uh, differentiable and it provides smooth gradient over here. Because of that, uh, we don't get any jumps in the output values. That is the one thing as well as uh, we can use this particular thing in back propagation algorithm also. And uh, this uh, logistic or sigma activation function looks like a S shape in this particular case. Coming back to the limitations of a sigma activation function, if you notice this particular diagram, this is the derivative of a sigma activation function. If the value of input is less than minus 3 or greater than plus 3 over here, the value is a very flat in this particular case. That is, uh, the gradients are on a very small because the gradients are very small, uh, what happens here is uh, the sigma function will face something called as vanishing gradient problem here. Because uh, we don't get much changes into this particular gradients, we don't get much changes into the, uh, you can say that the weights, if you are not able to get uh, changes in the weights, the learning will become very slow as well as uh, uh, the network will face something called as vanishing gradient problem over here. Coming back to the second uh, nonlinear activation function that is known as uh, tanh or uh, hyperbolic uh, tangent here. In this particular case, uh, the output will be in the range of minus 1 to plus 1. In sigma activation function, the output was in the range of 0 to 1. In this case, it is minus 1 to plus 1. If the input is on the higher side, the output will be 1. If the output input will be in, on the lower side, the output will be minus 1 in this particular case. Mathematical representation of a tanh function looks something like this. f of x is equal to e raised to x minus e raised to minus x divided by e raised to x plus e raised to minus x, where x is the weighted sum of the neuron. The advantages of tanh activation functions are the output of tanh activation function is zero centered. Hence, we can easily map the output values like strongly negative, neutral and strongly positive here. If it is minus 1, we can set it to uh, strongly negative. If it is 1, it will be strongly positive. If it is equal to 0, the meaning of this one is it's a neutral value here. And uh, uh, the data set can be mapped from minus 1 to plus 1. The meaning of this one is the mean of the hidden layer can become uh, to 0 or you can say that it is very close to 0 in this particular case. It helps in uh, centering the data and makes the learning uh, for the next layer much easier. The derivative of a tanh function looks uh, something like this. 
Similar to the sigmoid activation function, it also suffers from something called as a vanishing gradient problem. Because if you look at this particular diagram, below minus 3 and above plus 3, the gradients are flattened here. Because they are flattened, there will be uh, much uh, low learning uh, happens here. Because of that, they face something called as a vanishing gradient problem over here. This is how the sigmoid and tanh activation function works in artificial neural network. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.